the products that we do are native to New Zealand. Obviously, hemp and cannabis isn't native to New Zealand, but our people are the native aspect of that. So we've got a huge resource. We've got a huge resource of people who use, who grow to supplement their income. There aren't many millionaires out there from growing, from growing weed, but it puts shoes on our kids' feet and puts bread on the table. Now, this industry is growing. It's going to happen. If we aren't at the leading edge of it, we're going to get left behind and the household income in our area and a number, number of areas around the Mutu will go down. And most of the weed growers in the country are Māori. So if we became proactive about that, we are literally pushing the door open with our nose in this industry in New Zealand. Um, it's not an easy pathway because it's something that hasn't been navigated before, but Maui didn't take the, um, the trodden pathway either. Um, so our whole focus is having Māori landowners, our whānau, at the centre of the model. Um, legally cultivating, you should, I've, we run, we run um, courses through EIT Polytech, I work for them as well, and you should see the smiles of our whānau growing legal <laughs> cannabis in open fields. And all the scientists that come through and take Snapchats and photos to send to their teenage kids say, guess what I'm doing work today. <laughs> um, but like I said, full vertical integration, processing, manufacturing, distributing, co-owning IP, um, under medical cannabis licences. Um, the amount of um, Rob, who was kind of faded out, but everyone knows who Rob is, um, he's now one of the tutors on our one of our courses that we run. It's the first, I might get in trouble for this, government-funded cannabis <laughs> growing course. <laughs> but what, what that is, was designing courses around our Farno needs. So I guess bringing it back to, to the Rōpū that's here, is generally what we do is we create a box and try and push people through it. Um, in the politics space, a couple of years ago, they had a mandatory review of qualifications, and it shifted from NZQA uh, unit-based learning to outcomes-focused. So being at Udi Amar, we were now creating the framework and. Um, EIT, he said, oh, tutors, if you want to have an opportunity to have a say, I was like, hell yes, I want to have a say. So we got in there, and then once that came through, they said, okay, what kind of courses do you want to run? I want to run a horticultural course on building earth whare. Like, that's not horticulture. Yes, it is, and this is why, because we help create the framework. We want to run courses on, on cultivating cannabis. <laughs> that was literally their response. <laughs> Um, but because we've been able to walk hand in hand through that, it's, you know, it's probably our most... Um, but we have space for... We've got 30 students going through at the moment. We've got a waiting list of over 500 people without advertising that might come through. <laughs> now, that's, that's because it's something that our people already do. And it's... You know, we've got people that can come out of the bush into the paddock or into the light and legitimately earn money where they don't have the, ops, they don't have the risk of going to jail or their crops being pulled and the income being taken from their whānau. So that's really something that we've been able to do that supports our whānau, putting our whānau at the centre. Um, so like any industry, it will be, the cannabis industry will become a commodity industry over time. And so what we're doing is we're, we're developing our IP. That's where the real money is. We're doing clinical trials. We're doing um, we're setting up a um, breeding and research program up the coast. Um, we've got some novel um, world-leading delivery devices that have been done in partnership um, with one of our universities. Um, the whole tech space around extraction and, and branding. So it's not actually got much to do with the plant. It's all those extra things that's moving away from primary industry and showing our rangatai, who are the ones that are coming through that the thing that we're building is we're not building a successful cannabis company. That's a byproduct of building the ability for our rangatahi and the mokos that are coming through over the generations that we will be leading at whatever it is that is new industry. <laughs> Don't be good at old industries, at sunset industries. Let's really be pushing the envelope and being hoha in people's backsides about new stuff. Let's get, let's get out there. And now the only way that our rangatahi are ever going to see that is by get into that, and I, I, 
the question was asked in one of the um, in, in one of the presentations beforehand about that engagement is that they need to see it because our rangatahi at the moment see boxes being taken out of our four square on payday at eight o'clock in the morning and that's what they do now that's that's just the reality around the whole motu. and we need to be shifting that mentality of we can do anything that we want and actually having role models that do that and to know that you don't have to have the pathway out in front of you make mistakes and keep going and keep going and keep going and so when we went out around the coast and asked for um, the crowdfunding um, uh, we did some crowdfunding that's what people were buying into it's not a well let's have a go at this and if it doesn't work then we'll just go back to being on the benefit and waiting for our payday and getting next box it's actually we've got all these other things that we'll find something and that will teach us how to be successful we're not looking for the one pony that will come through and save the day we're looking to building a stable of thoroughbreds that we can continue breeding those thoroughbreds over time um, so, what does that look in reality for our whānau? Um, the investment of 16 mil, um, we'll be putting a hectare under glass house. 122 new jobs in three years. Now, to give some kind of um, scale of that, our annual total household income in 2013 in Rua Toria was less than $7 million. Our annual wage bill will be close to $10 million. So that has huge ramifications for the community. This isn't just about creating jobs. Um, we need to be able to build houses. But we don't have, a, in the rural communities, we don't have, in most communities in New Zealand, we don't have enough houses, let alone healthy houses, to be able to house our people. We don't want to be employing people and say, you live in this house and you're sick for a quarter of the year because you're living in someone's shed. So while economic development has been this instigator of things, one of, the, one of the, the hats that I wear is that I actually need to figure out with our community, or I'm, I'm supporting our community to build housing solutions. Then we need to be able to look after our whānau as they come home for the jobs. Because many of those generations haven't lived at home for a while, or for a couple of generations. So how do you make it safe for them coming back? But how do you make it safe for our whānau, our ahikā, for the, for the people to come back as well? So there's a whole lot of things that come out, and by des not by design, um, we have to deal with those things now, because we're creating the jobs. The business model doesn't work without it. So, um, last week we, we were at um, the New Zealand's inaugural hemp conference, and we put some things out there, because that's what we do. We put things out there and have a crack at them. None of any of these things are going to work by us in our own law here alone. We have to collaborate across the motu. We, New Zealand is way too small to compete on an international scale, and we literally just don't have the scale in New Zealand to be able to create the, increase the well-being through the demand for products that we need. So what we did was we, um, the, for an example, the hemp or the cannabis space is one of the few industries that Māori can own. Most of our industries in New Zealand are very hard for us to get on top of, but we can do that, so that's one of the things that we're pushing. Um, we're creating a medical cannabis council to be able to engage with government. Now, we're not dependent on government, but we, we're under their uh, influence. Now, that's something that's a reality going forward, so we want to be at that table. We want to be holding that space. Um, and then, as we do, we just... When we need expertise, rather than going out to it, we bring them to us. So we will have all the leading experts in the country, in that space, in the Ruatoria <coughs> on the coast at the end of this year. Because if you want, like our tūpuna used to do, if you wanted that expertise in your whānau, your tono tono for them to come, and then you marry them in. <laughs> so on all our invites, please, bring, please send your uh, most experienced single employees. <laughs> Um, so what does that look like? Um, over time we want to be able to create something like hemp spree. That's a bit of a rip off from Esprit, but there's no, there's no one's going to tell us. Um, so that we can take it to the world and it's only in that collaboration that we can actually really get some meaningful runs on the board. 
Yeah, so that's the medicinal cannabis. Um, that won't be like the 420 celebrations when everyone roll joints at the front of the party. Um, yeah, bringing our experts to us. Yeah, thanks Rob, come out into the light. <laughs> um, so yeah, we, we, we are young in our journey, but we're completely committed to it for intergenerationally. Like, this is something that sits within us. It's not something that we have to convince ourselves of, it's something that all our generations back home believe in and, and have bought it, and it's just part of us. So we're always looking for partners to accelerate what we do. Um, you know, I'm always slow down the sun so that we have more time to do stuff, so we just need to put more people into, the, into that time. So, um, yeah, we are all, uh, I guess that's, a, that's uh, a bit of our journey where we're at, some of the more heartfelt things of, of, of why we're doing it. Um, yeah, so, kahuri ki te whare, ngā mihi ni nui ki a koutou, ki tai mai i tēnei rangi, i tēnei pō. Um, I hope that there are some, some little gold nuggets in there for you. Um, and if not, I hope you enjoy the um, beautiful kai that's over on the table. Um, yeah, um, um, unfortunately, um, yeah, I've got a fourth baby due, so I'm, I'm not around tomorrow, but I will be around tonight. And I uh, look forward to having any conversations. Still yeah. Thank you. Um, what an awesome and inspirational quarter. Um, though you shared a lot of valuable gems with me, uh, personally what I found most inspiring was the underlying reason of why you're undertaking it. And that was the well-being of our people. And that the well-being of our people is tied to the well-being of our land. Reminds me of our whakatauki that says, Ko te kai, te toto, te tangata, e rangi ko te whenua, te orana. No reire, te rangatira, te neira, te mihi atu ki a koe. Um, we have a little gift here for you, a tonga. Um, Kaaf by our rangatira, hōhepa, kei fe rā koe. And it's a toki. Now I asked my grandfather there, oh, not my grandfather, my father-in-law, which you'll probably know. And I said, um, why do we call someone that's good at something a toki? Because you say, oh, he toki te, te whara. And he said, oh, if you were a man that could, um, that could use a toki well, well, you are a valuable asset to your whanau because I'd never go hungry. And he said, but now it is in relation to the sharpness of intellect and how one can use that sharpness of intellect to change themselves in their world. Nō reire te rangatira, tēnei rā tētahi taonga kia tuko atu ki a koe, mana nā rangatira nā mātou kato i te taonga ahinengaro nā haura e tā kohamu. Nō reira rā e te iwi, o mai te paki paki ki a koe. Tēnā koe te rangatira. Good way to finish on a high note, eh, Whanau? <laughs> <laughs> and while we're up there, we might as well look at the monkey. 